What's up guys? So it's been about a month, a little over a month since I started growing my hair out. You can kind of see it's slow going. And that actually brings up a really common question I get, which is can you actually make your hair grow faster? Here's what I found is that there's a lot of miscommunication in the marketing. It's kind of broken up into this sort of muddy marketing language. There's hair health, hair loss prevention, which is mixed in a lot with hair growth. And then there's actually like for a healthy person who's not experiencing some type of hair loss, whether that be genetic or stress related or nutrient deficiency, of like speeding up healthy hair growth. And most products that are claiming to accelerate hair growth, they're actually just using ingredients that help with people who are experiencing some sort of deficiency or some sort of hair loss, and it's not actually doing anything. So let me break it down a little bit. There are a few things that you can do to help you reach your genetic potential. Most people who are not experiencing some type of hair loss might still be falling short in other areas and are not fully optimizing it. However, there is a genetic limit. So let's talk about that a little bit. So here's the thing, there's a lot of products out there claiming to make your hair grow faster. There's supplements, there's oils, there's serums, special shampoos, all promising to speed up your hair growth beyond the normal rate. A lot of these products use scientific sounding ingredients that sound impressive. They have before and after photos which makes it really confusing to figure out if it's actually working and speeding up hair growth or if it's just helping someone who has experienced hair loss and they're regrowing what they've lost. So I wanted to know what does this actually, what does the research actually say? Not marketing claims, not you know testimonials. What do the clinical studies show about making hair grow faster? I dug into everything from biotin to scalp massages to rosemary oil to minoxidil. What I found is really gonna save you a lot of time and money, a lot of frustration, because the truth is quite nuanced than what a lot of these products are telling you. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna save you money right now. Biotin, stop buying it. 10,000 micrograms, this is what a lot of these supplement companies are selling. They're saying it supports hair growth. It's 30 to $45 a month. There is a 2023 review published in the Journal of Cosmetic Dermatology that analyzed all biotin studies. It looked at every single biotin pretty much out there. And their conclusion was that supplementation only helps when deficiency is confirmed. And multiple studies show that if you're not deficient, extra biotin is not going to accelerate growth. So don't buy those biotin gummies. Don't buy those expensive hair supplements. Just eat a few eggs. <laughs> if you have a confirmed biotin deficiency, like you've done a blood test and you're low on biotin, then yeah, that could come with symptoms like, like skin issues, neurological problems, hair falling out, hair slowing down, then yes, supplementation does help. But for most people, it is not going to do anything to speed up your hair growth. So if you're taking biotin for a just in case, I'm just gonna save you $400 to $500 a year, stop buying it. So that's the first finding. It's one of the biggest pieces of misinformation I see from companies selling these supplements or marketing and their products that biotin is going to help their hair grow faster. Okay, so here's the next most important thing I learned from all this research. And it's something that most products will not tell you is that there is a genetic limit to how fast your hair can grow. Hair grows in cycles on average. If you've watched any of my previous videos from a few years ago, I've talked about this before, but on average, scalp hair grows about half and half inch per month. That's about six inches per year. Some people grow, you know, third inch per month. Some people grow 0.7 inches per month. This range is kind of a, a little bit of a spectrum, but it's mostly determined by your genetics. I think the most recent data did not find any hair growing faster than 0.7 to 0.8 inches per month. So having said that, it also grows through phases. You have your antigen phase, which is your growth phase, which lasts two to seven years, your catagen phase, which is the brief two to three week transition phase, and then your telogen phase, which is your resting phase, and also when you shed hair, and that lasts about two to four months. So at any given time, about 85 to 90% of your hair is in this active growth phase, unless you're dealing with something like a telogen effluvium or some stress-related hair loss or something like that. Now, I went through study after study looking for evidence of products that can accelerate beyond this genetic baseline, and what I found was there is nothing. There's no proven supplement, there's no oil, there's no treatment that makes healthy hair follicles grow dramatically faster than your genetic programming. Now, I know that's probably not what you wanted to hear, but the research does show something, and this is really important, is that most people are not reaching their genetic potential. So if your genetic potential is here, and you don't have any deficiency or hair loss, 
you still might be under that genetic limit. You might be falling short. And there's a few factors that you can actually control. So the real question isn't, how do I make my hair grow twice as fast or you know, three times as fast? It's how do I make sure nothing is slowing down my natural growth rate? So that's what I'm gonna cover in the rest of this video. And first let's talk about what commonly prevents people from reaching that genetic potential because fixing this is going to make the biggest difference. This is one of the most well-documented factors in hair loss research is called telogen effluvium. So that's chronic stress. Your body produces elevated cortisol. This can push your hair follicles from the growth phase into the resting phase and the shedding phase prematurely. This is very thoroughly documented in dermatology literature. It's not controversial. Stress-related hair shedding is one of the most common types of temporary hair loss or temporary hair issues. I actually experienced this myself. Um, there was a really stressful period in my life last year. I was working crazy hours. I was not sleeping enough. I was drinking too much. I noticed that hair was coming out a lot, a lot more hair was coming out than normal in the shower. And once I addressed this stress, it took about three months for it to normalize. But what qualifies as chronic stress for hair? So it's you know consistently getting poor sleep, major life changes like a job loss, divorce, financial stress, severe caloric restrictions. If you're crash dieting, you're trying to lose weight really, really fast. Intense training without adequate recovery, mental health struggles, emotional health struggles. This pathway is some of the most clear pathways to chronic stress in research. It leads to elevated cortisol, which causes your follicles to shift into that shedding phase early, resulting in that hair loss. The good news is though, is when you address it, it recovers within three to six months. So this is kind of the foundation. If you're chronically stressed, fixing that matters more than any product you could possibly buy. The second major factor in reaching your genetic limit in closing this gap is addressing specific nutrient deficiencies. So there's a study in the Journal of Korean Medical Science that found that women with hair loss had significantly lower ferritin levels compared to their controls. And multiple studies showed that optimal hair growth needs ferritin above 40 nanograms per milliliter, ideally above 70. So low iron is one of the most common nutritional factors in people complaining about slow hair growth. This is especially true in women. So hair follicles have vitamin D receptors also. So research published in the Skin Pharmacology and Physiology shows that vitamin D also plays a critical role in hair follicle cycling. And many people are deficient in vitamin D, especially if you live where you don't get sun exposure often or you're not going outside enough or you're not supplementing vitamin D in the D3 bioavailable form, then you really need to address a vitamin D deficiency. The next is protein. Hair is made up of a protein called keratin. And if you're not eating adequate protein, you literally don't have the building blocks for hair growth. And research shows you need a minimum of eight gram, 0.8 grams, excuse me, 0.8 grams per kilogram of body weight. That's the minimum. So if you're also trying to build muscle or get fit, you probably wanna go a little bit above that, maybe one to 1.5 grams per kilogram of body weight. So if you weigh 70 kilograms, that's at least 56 grams of protein per day. You probably want a lot more than that. I personally try to strive for one gram per pound of body weight, not kilogram. So I weigh 205 pounds. I'm eating between 190 and 205 grams of protein a day. Fun fact, I put a video out recently that when I increased my protein intake, not only did my hair growth increase a little bit, but it was so much healthier. It was thicker, it was stronger. It wasn't breaking as easily. So protein is one of the most important macronutrients that you can consume to help your hair be as healthy as possible. The next one is zinc. Zinc deficiency is associated with hair loss. So zinc is also a very well researched micronutrient and if you're deficient in that it can uh, slow your hair growth but the catch is you can also be you know you can also overdose zinc. So you want to make sure you're not over supplementing zinc. A lot of supplements on the market have really high amounts of zinc in it so you just want to be careful that you're not taking too many things that you're getting an overdose of zinc because that can also affect hair uh, hair growth and hair loss as well. So, you know, don't just take random supplements hoping they'll help. Take, get a blood test, figure out what's actually low and take action to help balance that out. The third factor is mechanical or chemical damage. So if your hair is breaking as fast as it's growing, you're not going to see that length progress. A lot of studies show that hair damage 
identify these as the main culprits. So heat above 365 degrees causes significant protein damage. Repeated high heat exposure weakens the cuticle. So if you're using a hairdryer consistently, just make sure that you're using it on low to medium heat, or if you're using high heat, use a heat protectant. So quality hair is excessive heat protection consistently. Um, even quality hair can't withstand that uh, for a long period of time. Bleaching consistently permanently disrupts these protein bonds. So permanent color alters the hair structure. Um, these aren't inherently bad, but they do cause damage that can accumulate. Traction alopecia from consistently tight hairstyles. This is pretty well documented, but you have to get really, really tight with your hairstyles for this to become an issue. So if you're just tying your hair in a bun, that's probably not going to do much. It's really tight. Uh, maybe cornrows or really tight ponytails and then you're jumping up and down or going to play a sport with your hair tied really really tight that's probably when it might start to become an issue over time but most likely this isn't going to be an issue for you one thing that i've done is i switched out my cotton pillowcase for a silk or satin one it's just much easier on the cuticle. So I wanna be clear that the point isn't never to style your hair or be paranoid about this damage. It's just to be aware, right? If you're using heat daily without a heat protectant, try using a heat protectant. If you're constantly wearing super tight styles, it, yeah, it might be breaking a little bit and it could affect how fast your hair is growing. So prevention is easier than trying to repair the damage. And I think that is the point here. So now let's talk about some things that don't actually have a whole lot of research backing them up, but they're all over the market and they're not necessarily scams. It's just that they're making some wild claims that don't actually work, but, and the evidence is just not really there. So these like $60 activate growth, boost follicles, shampoos, so don't waste your money on these. Here's what the research shows about topical treatments is that most active ingredients that do anything, and this is again for people who are deficient or experiencing some sort of hair loss, not healthy people trying to close their gap to their genetic limit. Most of these active ingredients need extended contact time on your scalp to penetrate and have any effect. And we're talking hours here, not minutes. So if shampoo sits on your scalp for two to three minutes before you rinse it off, any potential active ingredients that are in this, you know, marketed as being this magical shampoo, they're being washed away before they can do anything. There's a lot of studies comparing leave on treatments versus rinse off products. And they just significantly show that leave on treatments are much more effective than rinse off products. You just can't get meaningful effects from something that you immediately rinse away. So what you should look for instead is just a basic gentle shampoo, something for your hair type that keeps your hair cleansed and a conditioner that keeps your hair soft. It tames frizz, it nourishes and hydrates and it helps add some slip and it helps prevent breakage. So the research doesn't support spending $60 on growth promoting shampoos that say, you know, activate your follicles. It's just not, there's not a lot of research there. Same thing with hair growth vitamins with 20 different ingredients, collagen supplements, Unless, again, unless you're deficient in something, you're just, you're not going to accelerate your growth past your genetic limit. Your body doesn't store extra vitamins and minerals to make hair grow faster. It uses what it needs and then it excretes the rest. So save your money, fix your deficiencies. Um, and here's another quick one is that trimming your hair is not gonna make it grow faster. The point of trimming your hair is really just to help prevent split ends or to shape your hair so it grows evenly. You probably already know this is, sorry if I'm telling you something you already know, but hair grows from the follicles in your scalp, not from the ends. Now you know what the research actually says. You can make informed decisions instead of hoping that random products will work. You know, focus on your foundations fixing stress, fixing deficiencies, preventing damage. That's way more important and is going to have way bigger effect on your hair growth than expensive serums or supplements. So if this video helped you understand what is actually evidence-based versus what is just marketing, hit that like button, subscribe if you want more videos like uh, where I actually dig into the research on stuff like this, drop a comment. Uh, if you have any suggestions for other videos or questions that you'd like answered, what other topics you want me to research, I'll go through the studies, I'll break down what it says. My name's Trav, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.